Hello everyone, let's get started. Take two for my video regarding the breaking news, my insights I had finally, which basically I can tell that now already reinsures me that I have made 100% the right decision to invest into XRP. Now, the picture you're staring at right now basically got me started into doing my research. I call my creative theory the super highway where basically I figured that Ripple years ago already made some some partnerships with people introducing Ripple technology X current X rapid within to their products. Custom partnerships with terminals, SAP and the stuff. There are enough other um, people out there on Twitter. My most favorite right now is uh, Darren Moore. I think it's his name. I hope I pronounce it properly. Um, anyway, that was basically the kickstart of my research. However, I always wondered how the hell will it be that XRP will be in the center of all ILP connections. This is something I basic which failed on me to to kick my brain. Okay. Now the whole community is basically waiting for banks to announce eventually using XRapid, which we all know makes use of XRP to source liquidity. Why has there still no banks been announced using XRapid? Interesting question. Another interesting quote from David Schwartz made me think XRapid was not built for banks. Hmm? What are we waiting for then? Then I stumbled across some interesting discussions around privacy requirements from banks. Literally nothing can be known about their transaction not the details of the sender and receiver not details about the payments like rhythm amount of money whatever nothing but by using xrp or xrapid as soon as X xrp is being transacted it'll be written onto the public ledger and thus I thought with enough artificial intelligence applied over time it could be tracked that some wallets or accounts may belong to JP Morgan, other to others to, to Bank of America and thus you could tell the public eventually over time how much money JP Morgan sends Bank of America. A total no go. So I asked myself, but how can then the such information be totally hidden on the XRP ledger. Some say it can be. I think, I believe it cannot. It's not possible. There are APIs which let you explore everything. A uh, account balances, transactions based on those accounts. Literally everything is written on the ledger and is publicly available. I knew, however, ILP, Intel Ledger Protocol, encrypts all transactions. Maybe the solution lies within ILP. Up to now, I thought ILP only works within the same fiat zone, or if Nostros exists on the other side, in the other fiat zone. But Nostros are exactly what we want to get rid of with XRP as a bridge liquidity. So where comes XRP into play? Then I came on to another interesting question because I knew ILP was supposed to work in the following example. You send Bitcoin and the receiver with e receives Ethereum or whatever other digital asset. But how would that work? The only explanation is Someone sells Bitcoin, receives fiat, buys with that fiat Ethereum 
and, and moves the Ethereum into the appropriate target address. Okay, so that was my thinking about how ILP could help send something and receive something else. Basically with XRP it's the same approach, only the other way around. You would buy XRP with fiat, send the XRP and then sell XRP to receive the other fiat. But the, the mechanism behind it is, is exactly the same. But still, I was pondering about the question, how does ILP do that? So I gave ILP another look and indeed in its latest version of ILP description in the section of ILP packet lifecycle in step 5 I stumbled across the following sentence the connector may use an exchange order book or any other method it chooses to set its exchange rate between the incoming and outgoing assets Bitcoin, Ethereum or Fiat and XRP so two important things we learn from that sentence there will be connectors set up in this whole ILP infrastructure those connectors take care of conversion from one thing from one asset into another asset okay and, and actually I basically mentioned the second important point as well that, that things can be exchanged, that there is an exchange rate available. Okay, aha, uh -huh. then I thought, now I know where XRP comes into play. Maybe Ripple deployed XRP fiat connectors. Aha, uh -huh. maybe, okay, that's a bit uh, far fetched um, theory, X rapid instances may be actually those connectors or at least companies which are known xrapid um, users I'm pretty sure that they're also running such a, uh, an XRP fiat connector of that I'm pretty sure and finally that picture you're looking at makes sense okay but hold on such a connector could do such conversion with any fast and cheap digital asset such as Stellar Lumens, XLM but why then does everyone, everyone think XRP is in the center of that ILP? because that connector wins for an ILP connection which offers the cheapest exchange rates and we all know XRP has a huge ecosystem it's offered on I don't know 290 or something exchanges worldwide I think in the meantime you can exchange XRP in I think it's over 30 currencies already worldwide so that ecosystem is really huge. XRP is getting more and more the base currency on, on, on already existing exchanges. Now, um, we know where, where XRP will come into play into the, in, in, in this ILP architecture. Now coming back to, to Ripple, why then is Ripple basically telling us about X current users, X rapid users and why are they actually doing that when the whole thing basically would be enough to basically produce these connectors without us even knowing it and I think they're basically ramping up the ecosystem for those guys if you are a little bit older already the er very very early days of internet when the internet basically didn't exist but what did exist was these services I don't know their names AOL, CompuServe and many others you had a phone number you dialed up with your modem and then you were in 
within their realm. You could only see content produced within CompuServe when you were a CompuServe customer or when you were an AOL customer you could only see AOL content. Only by introducing this HTTP protocol it made it possible to merge everything and all of a sudden it wasn't important anymore through which from then on called ISP service provider you were connecting to the internet because the HTTP protocol basically made it possible. But first we needed these AOLs and CompuServe's all around the world so that users actually could log on somewhere and with the introduction of the HTTP protocol the whole world basically merged into one global data exchange world which we today call internet or world wide web at that time okay lastly one for me important now is not anymore how many ripple net customers we have because i think there are more than others have proved pretty well it'll be hundreds if not thousands of financial institutions which are on the ripple train but i think and i'm 100 percent sure about that it's not important if a company is using ripple technology or not it's use it's important to know they are using ilp to connect with other ledgers and we know that connector with the cheapest exchange rates for fiat wins and in 95 or more percent of the cases this will be xrp and because it's just a protocol there is no need to change hardware infrastructures it's just software believe me that change into that ilp enabled world as we see in that picture you're staring at will happen fast very fast with that i wish you a nice evening or day wherever you are